Well, good morning and praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord for he is good. The Lord is good and greatly to be praised. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, God bless you. God bless you. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen and amen. Well, welcome to Faith Life Fellowship's online Sunday service. Uh, I am Pastor Henry Simon. So glad to be with you uh, on this uh, Sunday, October 8th, 2023. Amen and amen. Uh, just in about, uh, what, two or three more months, we'll be done with uh, 2023 uh, and 2024 is uh, upon us. And so uh, I tell you, we are looking forward to the things that God has for us. And uh, we, um, let me check my streaming. Uh, action needed. Okay. And so uh, we're... Um, uh, coming to you live here from Dallas, uh, Texas. Uh, again, I'm using my webcam and my son, he's usually behind our camera. We've been having some issues and so on and so forth, but I'm, I'm here live with you. I'm on my using my webcam, which is uh, um, um, a, little, uh, uh, a little restrictive in that um, we can't pan and turn to our uh, screen to show you um, our points and so on and so forth and graphics and so on and so forth. But I'm gonna do my best to uh, share the word of God with you today. I do have points for um, uh, for us today. So um, please, please, please just bear with me. Um, I do have scriptural references, but it'd be obviously difficult to give you, uh, to give you all of that. Uh, but suffice it to say, I believe that the word of God that we'll go for today, um, it'll bless, um, it'll bless you in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we give you thanks and praise for this day. We honor you. We glorify your name today, Father God. We lift up the name that's above every name. That name is Jesus. That name is Jesus. And we praise you, Jesus. We, we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for these wonderful people around this world, Father God, that tunes in, Lord God, to our broadcast on a weekly basis, Lord God. Father God, I pray a special blessing over them. Father God, we ask that you would just bless our time this morning. Father God, bless, Father God, the words of, uh, of my mouth, Father God. Anoint me, Father God. Allow us to hear the very oracles of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. God bless you. We're so happy that you've chosen to connect with us. My wife and I, we send you greetings, um, and uh, we pray that you are blessed um, uh, and highly favored in God, um, that the peace of God rules and reigns uh, in your life. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, um, we have... Um, uh, much to talk about today, but before I get to uh, I get to that, I want to pray for the people of um, um, Israel and on um, everything that's happening um, right now in that uh, part of the world. Um, our uh, prayers, um, our thoughts go out uh, to the people of Israel that there would be peace between Hamas and uh, the Israelites. Um, and uh, that uh, this um, um, unprovoked attack would yield um, uh, something um, positive. Um, but Israel is under attack and we stand uh, with Israel uh, in prayer uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, which leads me to my, um, which leads me to my, my, um, my, scripture reference for today um i like to read it to you and it's found in psalm 122 and david says uh in psalm 122 verse 6 through 9 pray for the peace of jerusalem pray for the peace of israel may those who love you be secure there's a blessing in praying and covering israel 
May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Would you pray with me that there would be peace in that region? Uh, the bloodshed, I believe, um, from before we came on live, I believe it's in excess of 700 to 800, the early approximates, um, uh, estimates, um, deaths of uh, those four uh, on uh, the Israel uh, side and several hundred on the on the Palestinian side and um, we just we just need peace we need peace in the United States we need peace in our government we need peace around this world Jesus come come Lord Jesus we need peace and so um, if there's not ever a time in history that we need to hear from God we need the peace of God uh, is now amen and amen and so that is Psalm 122, verses 6 through 9. You can meditate on that as you uh, pray um, for um, the people of Israel and even the Palestinians. Um, and so um, we need to come together in peace in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I plead the blood of Jesus over Israel. Your firstborn, Yahweh, your firstborn, Israel. I plead the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus over your people, and may we come to repentance as a result, Father God, of all of this warfare. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, today is part eight um, of our um, current series, It's Behind You. And so part eight, the courage to possess the promise is where we are uh, today. And so um, I did, uh, for those of you who've been following me, uh, the Holy Spirit did give me um, um, some additional um, um, segments to uh, this series. And so we'll go through part 12 and we'll finish about mid-November. If the Lord says the same, um, we have uh, uh, 12 parts. I'm excited, excited to continue in this because the Lord has been showing us uh, so much and teaching us uh, uh, so much. He is our rabbi. Amen and amen. And so the courage, the courage, uh, um, um, the courage uh, to possess the promise, the, the courage to possess the promise. And so we'll, we'll go, um, we'll go. Um, all right, we'll go uh, to our scripture reference today, and you'll find that our assignment in Joshua uh, chapter 14, Joshua chapter 14, I'll read the NIV, um, verses 6 through 15, Joshua, uh, Joshua 14, uh, verses 6 through 15, okay, and I'll give you a, a moment to, to get there, Joshua chapter 14. And the word of God says, Now the people of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kiznite, uh, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my fellow Israelites who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt in fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day Moses swore to me, The land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance, and that, your and that of your children forever. Because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses. While Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as young or strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now 
as I, I was then. Now give me this hill country or this mountain that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites, the Anakites uh, were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kiznite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba, after Arba, who was the greatest man among the Anakites. Um, then the land had rest from war. Um, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this time. I thank you for these kind people. Father God, heal, touch, deliver. Father God, save. In Jesus' name, Lord God, amen and amen. Well, this is part eight, as I said, the courage to possess the promise. Uh, I've entitled today's message, Hold On To It. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. Greetings to all of you and peace be unto you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining us for this week's continuation of its Behind You series, The Courage to Possess the Promise. Last week, uh, in part seven in our series, The Courage to Fight, I taught about the importance of striking the ground through the interactions between Elisha and the King Joash. Elisha strongly rebuked the king for striking the ground only three times, if you recall, saying that you should have kept going to ensure your victory over the Aramites at Aphaz. Elisha's words to the king were meant to send a clear message to Joash to be persistent in warfare or prayer as it relates to us. Spiritual warfare, that is. Prayer, as this is pleasing to God. This is where our victory is. It's our reliance upon him. And his word, not our wealth, knowledge, military, weapons, chariots, and horses. It's our reliance upon the Lord God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 instructs God's people to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Uh, Psalm uh, 37, 5 and 6 says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Psalm 91 and verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Jeremiah, blessed, uh, Jeremiah 17 and 7, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in in the Lord, for he shall be planted like a tree by the, uh, by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river. And he will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yield, yielding fruit. Psalm 43 and 8, David says, Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. 43 and, 1, 8, and, and 18. The Lord is near to all those who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. These scriptures, my brothers and sisters, are like fruit hanging from a tree. These verses of scripture, the word of God, you understand the word of God is, 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 is the word of God is, is like fruit 
hanging from a tree, a tree that is in the midst of the garden. The tree in the garden mentioned in Genesis chapter 2, verse 8, this is the tree that I am speaking about. You know, it's the cross. It's Calvary. It's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This is the tree that Adam and Eve was forbidden to eat from. The cross at Calvary was already prepared, you understand. And God told Adam and Eve, you cannot eat from the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil. It was not time for Jesus to be yet revealed. And yet God had already prepared it before the very foundations of the world. God had already prepared a tree. Yes, it points to Calvary. You are not to touch that tree. However, the enemy came for them to do just what? To touch that tree. But it wasn't time. So they ate of the fruit of it, and the Bible says that their eyes were open, and they knew that they were naked. They knew that they were sinners. <laughs> Listen to me. I don't want to get excited just yet, but this is revelation for somebody. Listen, 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 listen. The cross at Calvary had already been prepared for the sins of mankind. Jesus, the sinless lamb of God, who was slain from the foundations of the world, was already there before Adam and Eve could ever think about eating anything. It was already there. He is the tree of life. He is the tree of life. This is why we can pick fruit from it. What is that fruit? The fruit is the word of God. The fruit is these scriptures. How many of you have your favorite scriptures that when you're going through something that you go to, this is what you strike the ground with. This is how you fight your battles. It's on your knees. It's in the word of God. Pick some fruit. Pick some fruit. It's the word of God. It's the word of hope. The word of God is, is ripe and ready for battle. Which one do you like? What are your favorite verses of scripture? Pick one and get to work. Pick some and get to battle. Strike the ground. The spoken scriptures, the rhema word of God are like missiles or like missiles, strike the ground. Because you see, it's your faith. It's what you, it's what you believe in. It's what you believe in. It's our faith in our strength, in our chariots, in our military. No, it's, it's our strength in the word of God. Jesus said to his disciples, and whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive, Matthew 21 and 22. If you're going to possess, if I'm going to possess uh, the promise, the vision, what God has told you that you can't have, if you're going to possess it, then we must completely surrender to his will, his way, his authority, turn away from wickedness, turn away from sin, turn away from evil, and submit to God, then we can see the enemy to flee. I'm, I'm preaching better than you. Do I hear, do, does someone hear what I'm saying? Now, when Jesus took the cross at Calvary, now we have power. Now we have authority. Now, we're ready to walk in our blessing. We're ready to walk in our promise. Caleb, he's now ready to possess his promise. He's ready. And interestingly, the scriptures tell us, tells us in verse six that the children of Judah go out to meet Joshua at Gilgal. Oh, I'm gonna teach today. No other tribe is mentioned for whatever reason. 
there were 12 tribes. But no other tribe is mentioned. But Judah goes out to meet Joshua. The people, the children of Judah, go out to speak with Yeshua. It's the body of Christ. Those of us who bring the praise and the worship before him that we go out to meet Yeshua. We understand that before we are to get any land, any blessing, any promise, we understand that we, we come before him. Why is Joshua back at Gilgal? Joshua's up in age. Been there, done that, you understand. Got the t-shirt, got the victory. He was obedient. Remember, Gilgal was in Joshua chapter five. It was the last town or city right before they conquered or the conquest of Jericho. Already did that. Already did that, but Joshua is back on the other side at Gilgal. I, I, I said, Lord, as I studied this, why would Joshua be there? God took me back to Joshua chapter 5. See, at God, Gilgal, God had commanded Joshua to circumcise all of the males. It was the place of circumcision, cutting away, you understand. It was a cutting away of, of the foreskin of the male anatomy. I say, Lord, okay, but why was Joshua back at Gilgal? Joshua had been obedient. He had done everything uh, that you had required of him. They, uh, uh, they conquered Jericho. Uh, they went to Ai. They faltered there because of Achan's sin. Uh, but then they went back to Ai and they conquered Ai and they started moving on. And now chapter 13, God is telling Joshua, you're up in age now. Get ready to disperse the rest of this land. There's so much more land to be, uh, to be uh, 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 you know, given to the rest of the tribes and so on and so forth. And in the next chapter, 14, which is where we are today, Joshua is back at Gilgal. Gilgal means a will, a rolling, or a circle of stones. And interestingly, in the Hebrew, it says, in the Hebrew, it says, it, it says it's sacred. It's sacred. Gilgal, as I said, was the place of circumcision. The place that signifies a, a, a wheel or rolling or circle of stones. Gilgal is that place that we all come to before we can possess the promise. Every Jericho and every promise has a Gilgal that precedes it. Every Jericho, every promise, every blessing of monumental significance, somebody's about to come into a monumental season. But you can't get there unless you go through Gilgal. Every monumental season in our life that God has for us, it is attached, uh, attached to it is a Gilgal. That requires reflection and repentance. There it is. You must live a life that is repentant in nature. Joshua, he lives by example to show us that it's not just a one-time thing. It's not just a one-time thing. Yes, they did it in chapter 5. And Joshua was back in chapter 14. He's in Gilgal, which tells us that uh, uh, it, it, it's it's Gilgal is 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 it's a requirement in the spirit. 
It's a requirement in the spirit. It's a requirement. It's sacred. I said, Lord, it's sacred. What? Because you see, Gilgal is not a geographical place per se where Joshua was. It's not the geographical place that's sacred. It's not about a building. It's the stones that are sacred. I'm talking to somebody. It's our hearts that are uh, full of evil and wickedness and so on and so forth. And we're expecting God to open this door. And we're expecting God to do this. And we're expecting God to do that. But God says, no, 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 no. You, you, you must come to Gilgal again. Yeah, you must come to Gilgal again because sometimes we have stones of heart. Sometimes along the, 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 the life, the, the journey of life, which is oftentimes a, a circle, you understand, just as round as this earth is, you, you understand. Uh, uh, we, 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 we come across these distractions and temptations and, and trials of the circles of life that requires that, that and may I suggest, the demands of the spiritual laws of God, it demands me to remain or to possess a mindset of repentance. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why I believe he's back at Gilgal. Do you have the courage to possess the promise? Because you see, attached to the, the promise, the blessings, the things that God has for, are, for us are many adversaries. Paul says, uh, there's a great door before me, but there are many adversaries on the other side of this. Before the Lord sends me around the world, are you, are you ready for the trials? Are you ready for the temptations before God gives you what he has for you? Are you ready for uh, uh, for the test and, and trials of it? So that means that we must be uh, 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 be a frequent visitor of Gilgal. In other words, you, you must stay in repentance. You must stay spiritually clean. I told you last week, and even as I started this, this message, courage, courage. The courage, courage means the ability to do something that frightens one. And we see this through the, the life of Caleb as he's asking for this mountain. But I also want to challenge myself. Do I have the courage to live for God when no one's looking? Do I have the courage to live for God, to do what's right when my wife is not next to me? D do I have the courage to stand up for what is right, even when it cost me something? Courage, the ability to do something that frightens one, mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. I have eight thinking points for um, possessing your promise that I'd like to share with you. Eight. And, and, and as we read the scripture, I'm going to give you that eight. And I'm sorry we don't have it on the screen, but if you have a pen or a pencil or something that you want to jot down, I'll try to to teach um, um, not as fast, but but but. But but hear me, and you can go back and watch. You can go back and watch this message. Joshua, they come to Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kizanite, he says to Joshua, "You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, at Kadesh Barnea about you, and me." I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. Can I tell somebody, you number one, point number one, or a, my first thinking point today, protect your vision. Protect your vision. 
Caleb had to wait. You see, and that's something that we don't like to do. We, we don't like to wait because uh, the trials and tribulations of life can make us think that it's not going to happen. You have to protect your vision. You have to protect the promise regardless. Regardless of what comes, hell or high water, you, you have to protect it. And Joshua, I'm sorry, Caleb says, he says, I brought him back a report according to my convictions. It doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter that you're the oddball. It doesn't matter that you stick out like a sore thumb. It doesn't matter that you're not in the majority and that you happen to be the minority. Listen, Caleb says, he says, I brought back what I, I brought back according to my convictions. What are your convictions as it relates to God? What are your convictions as it relates to the Holy Spirit? What are your convictions as it relates to Jesus? Peter, who do you say I am? God is concerned about what you think. Doesn't matter about who or, or what others think. They're not going to possess the land. You will. Caleb says, my fellow Israelites who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt in fear. Leaders, parents, husbands, wives. It matters what you think, what you believe, and what you say to your family. It matters what you say to your people, Mr. Leader. It matters what you say to your subordinates, ma'am. It matters to what we say to our children. He says, How, however, I, I, I followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Protect your vision. Protect the, the promises of God over your life. Though it tarries, protect it. Which, which leads me to my second point. God has not changed his mind. <clears throat> Where your promises, uh, the promises that God has made to you, God has not changed his mind. Listen to me. God says you can still have it. God says it's still yours. Listen, the, the gifts and the calling of God, Romans 11 and 29, are irrevocable. In other words, God does not change his mind like man. What God has spoken, that he will perform. That's Ezekiel 24 and 14. God watches over his word to perform it. That's Jeremiah 1 and 12. He who calls you, he who chose you is faithful, who also will do it. That's 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24. God has not changed his mind. Listen, and Caleb, he's holding on to this. All these years, he's holding on to this. He says in verse 10, he says, Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years. Ever since the time he, uh, he said this to Moses while Israel moved about in the, in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. Which leads me to my third point. Embrace patience. Embrace patience. Psalm 37 and 7. Here's some scripture references for you. Here's some beautiful fruit for you. Isaiah 40 and 31. Romans 8 and 25. Romans 12 and 12, Galatians 6 and 9, Ephesians 4 and 2, Colossians 3 and 12. I, I, I talk about patience a lot, and I'm not going to belabor the point, only to say that it's beneficial for you and I. Patience, as told you a couple weeks ago, it's a weapon. Embrace patience. Become comfortable with waiting on God. And it's a difficult thing. And it's something that none of us, if you're going to serve him, if you're going to uh, uh, walk with him, you can't escape it. He's not fast food. He, 
he, uh, he he could do anything he want. He could he could expedite some things, and and God is doing that. But you you understand uh, what I'm saying? God requires. It's a virtue. It's a fruit of the spirit. Long suffering, patience. Eighty five years. I'm eighty five years old. God has kept me alive, which leads me to point number four. You will experience loss along the way. You will experience loss along the way. Caleb saw a lot in his 85 years. Caleb saw many of his friends die in the wilderness. With the exception of Joshua, all of his friends and, and relatives Family, they died in the wilderness. Listen to me. Caleb lost everything. He went into the promised land without. It was just he and Joshua. Everyone, as the word of the Lord came forth, as Moses said, everyone died. You will miss weddings and funerals. You will miss celebrations and sporting events, and graduations, and family gatherings, and birthdays. You will have to walk away from some people. You will experience rejection and people walking away from you. You will be misunderstood. Uh, you will be talked about. You'll be abused and misused by some. There is a price for the mantle, the calling, the high calling of God to be placed on you. You cannot have him and them at the same time. Having him comes with a price. And oftentimes, it'll be just you and your spouse or you and your children or you and God alone, and that's it. There is a costly sacrificial price for the propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You cannot take everyone with you into your promise, whatever that is, whatever season you find your life, uh, yourself in, at this point in your life. Uh, my wife and I, we've been married almost 29 years. Looking back, it's just my wife and I. It's just my wife and I. Listen, my wife and my children and their lives. Listen, you have to be, be prepared to say goodbye to people that you think you need. Because guess what? God has not authorized many of these people to come with you. David had to say goodbye to those sheep. His brothers hated him as it was. But David had to say goodbye to those sheep. David went to the palace as he was called up by the king. He went alone. And the Bible says the king never let him go home. At one point, it came to a point, the king never let him go home again. In other words, you belong to me. Do you belong to Jesus? Do you have the courage to possess the vision? Do you have the courage to pay the price to possess your promise? It's going to come with the price. Most people in our lives are just in for a season. Some longer than others. And then they fall off. I know this is the beginning of autumn. Or the fall season. But it's the same way with our lives. Some people are like leaves on a tree in autumn. They fall off. Which opens the door, thank God, for new leaves or people to spring forth in their season. That season for that person, 
that season for that neighborhood, that season for that city, that season for that particular ministry is over. This is the cost of discipleship. Do you have the courage to possess the promise? Got about 20 minutes left. Let me, let me get moving. I don't have much longer. Caleb said, I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this mountain. Give me this hill country. When it says in the King James, this, this mountain, it's actually a set of mountains. Hill country. Ups and downs, you understand? This is what he's asking for. When we come into relationship with Jesus and he says, follow me, get ready for the ups and downs. The ups and downs of life. The ups and downs. Give me this hill country you can't just have in a hill country. You can't just have the ups. You got to come down. We used to live in Denver, Colorado, beautiful mountains, the Rocky Mountains. And, and sometimes we would go into the mountains or just looking at them, flying over them, whatever it is. A lot of ups and downs. And some of you live in really mountainous regions. You understand what I'm saying. Give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. Don't forget about your promise. Protect it. You yourself heard that the giants were there, the Enochs, the Enochs, the Enochites were, were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, listen to his faith. I will drive them out just as he said, which leads me to point number five. Possess a can-do mindset. Possess. You have to have a can-do mindset, regardless that the giants are there. Regardless of uh, the amount that it's going to cost you financially. Regardless of what it's going to cost you in terms of education and losing people. Look, 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 look. This is about you. And God wants to give you what, what he has for you. But you can't do it your way. It's got to be done his way. You have to possess a, a can-do mindset. In other words, I can do all things through Christ. Philippians 4, 13, who strengthens me? I can do all things. So if you're telling me to follow you, then whatever it is that's coming, you got it. Good God that you are. Romans 12 and 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to change your mind. Jesus says, can you put new wine in old wineskins? You can't do it. You cannot expect to come into your promise and possess it at that because there's many enemies there. Many people won't like you. Many people will hate on you. Listen, listen. They're going to mistreat you, but it's yours. It's yours. And if it's mine, then that means God is with me. And that means no weapon formed against me shall. you got to change your mindset. you got to change your mindset. Point number six. Remember that the Lord is your help. As you, 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 you have this can-do mindset, remember the Lord is your help. Caleb said, but the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as, just as he said. I just taught that there's death and life in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. I'm going to say it again. Your and my words have power. David says in one Psalm 121, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who has made heaven and earth. And oftentimes we, 
we forget that God is just that big and bigger because we're so focused, and I'm guilty of it, so focused on my situation. Proverbs 18 and 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. This is your God. He's your help. He's my help. Number seven is similar to number six. Rely on God for strength for the battle. Okay, I got the mindset. Okay, Lord, I remember that you are my help. Now, Lord, give me strength for this. Give me strength. Choose faith over fear. It's not us just reciting scriptures. It's us living it. David says, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. That's Psalm 56 and 3. When I am afraid. So fear happens to us all. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. But the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Psalm 23. You know how it starts. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me. You, you, you understand? God, God is, he's running this. If we'll submit to him and if we'll allow him to. Ephesians 6 and 10, Paul says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Rely on God, Henry. Rely on God, sir. Rely on God. Rely. You know, it's, it's good to have a mindset. It's good to have a mindset. I, I think it, it, it starts here anyway. But now I have to put that to action. Rely. It's your faith. Rely on God for strength. Choose faith over fear. Choose faith over fear. The Bible says that Joshua, and I'm closing, Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. Hebron means association. I prophesy everything that's associated with your promise that God has given you. Somebody better start rejoicing. Everything associated with what God has promised you, people, relationships, uh, opportunities, doors, uh, uh, wealth. I told you wealth transfer. Everything associated with that, you're going to walk into it. The Bible says he blessed Caleb and gave him Hebron. So Hebron has belonged. Listen, listen. De Caleb has been dead and gone. But look, look at what 14 is. It's timeless. Your God is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. Listen. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kizanite, ever since. Caleb and all his family is dead. Because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Listen to me. All of us who will embrace the spirit of Caleb. <laughs> Hebron belongs to us. Hallelujah! It belongs to us. You better embrace it. You better make those declarations. You better decree it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in verse 15, as I close, Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba after Arba, who was the greatest man among the Enakites. Then the land had rest from war. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Caleb won. <laughs> It used to belong. Now I own it.
In other words, I am no longer the borrower. I am the lender. I am above and not beneath. Listen to me. What's for you, someone already has it, and God's going to take it from them. I ain't talking about somebody's husband. I'm not talking about somebody's wife. Don't get it mixed up. Don't get it mixed up. Point number eight, the promise is a generational blessing. See, we don't, we don't talk generational blessings very often, but this is something that Caleb has, he, he, he gave to his daughters, and that's a topic for another story, and, and to their daughters and sons and to their relatives. Listen to me, Caleb is dead and gone. This is generational. The blessings of the Lord are generational. Christ has redeemed us, Galatians 3.13 says, from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. He hung on that tree. That the blessing of Abraham, there it is, might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Where they at, where they at, where they at. Thank you, Father, that it has come upon me, my children, my daughter, my son, my wife, my grandchildren, and my grandchildren's children, children, children. Listen, this is a generational thing. Do you have the courage to possess your promise? Because you see, it's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the the promise of the Spirit through faith. I, I, I couldn't have closed this any better. But I got one more. I got one more. For those of you, sometimes my wife has to get me off the cliff because I think I'm getting old. She has to shake me. Let me shake you. For those of you who have disabilities, those of you who think you're too old, Caleb was 85. Caleb was 85. He waited 45 years. He waited. He waited. Here, 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 here's my closing verse of scripture. Then we go pray. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. L listen to this, this beautiful apple. Listen to this fruit. See, this is why Genesis doesn't tell us what the fruit was. People thinking it's an apple. It could be anything. The word of God is just that beautiful. Lemons, apples, grapes, plums, mangoes, whatever your thing is. This is the word of God. It's beautiful. Second Corinthians 9 and 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you, having all, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Pastor, what do you mean? For those of us sometimes who think that our age is in the way, can I tell you God is redeeming your time? <laughs> See, this sometimes sometimes when I'm whining to my wife, she'll remind me. You're in your prime. God's got you. You got this through Christ. I want to encourage you. Partake of 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. Let's dine. Let's dine. Let's feast on the word of God. Let's dine. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Not some, all grace abound toward you that you having all sufficiency, everything that you need in all things may have an abundance for every good work. This has been so good. I give God praise. I give God praise. I am ready to possess my promise. Whatever it is that you're believing God for, listen to me. God is for you. God is for you. Come into the garden and let's eat some fruit. Come on. It's open now. It's open now. Let's eat some fruit.
It's the word of God. Let's, 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 let's shoot some arrows. Let's strike the ground. Let's begin God to see. Believe God for the miraculous. Amen. And amen. If you can do it, it's not God. If it's bigger than you, <laughs> nearly impossible, it's God. If it's impossible, it's God. Amen. And amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I, I, I Just in review, uh, for those of you, I wish he would... Tell us the the eight points again. So l l let me just let me just tell you, since we don't have our screen today, uh, we're going to get that together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So my first point was protect the promise. Number one, protect it. Number two, God wants you to know He hasn't changed His mind. The deal's still on. You still can have it, though it tarries, though it's been a while. You still can have it. You still can have the promise. Number three, be patient. Embrace patience. Embrace, embrace patience. Number four, understand. In your pursuit of this, this promise, this vision, you're going to experience loss. You will experience loss. You can't take everyone with you. In fact, most, most people will not be able to come with you. This is between you and God and your spouse and family. Okay? You will experience loss. They are behind you. It's just a season. They're behind you. Let them fall off. Let them fall. Number five, possess a can-do mindset. I can do this. Have a growth mindset. Can-do. I can do this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Number six, remember that the Lord is your help. The Lord, the Lord is your help. The Lord is your help. Not your parents, uh, not your friends. Seek God, seek God. Number seven, rely on God for strength for the battle. Because you know what? Anything that God gives you, it's gonna be a battle. It's yours. But it's a battle. It's all in scripture. Even for Jesus to go to Calvary, it was a battle. It was, guys, it's a battle. It's, uh, Jesus said it like this, uh, the kingdom of heaven suffer violence and the violent take it by force. Take yours. Take yours. In the spirit, take it. Take it. Possess your promise. Possess it. Possess it. And number eight, remember that it's bigger than you. The promise is a generational blessing. It's yours. But also, this is about more than you. It's about your uh, generations to come. God, you know, when he told Abraham, look at the sky, count the stars, if you can. It's bigger than you, Abraham. But you'll enjoy it. But it's, it's bigger than you. This has been its Behind You series, part eight, the courage to possess the promise. I pray in the name of Jesus that you, you heard something, that you learned something today. I'm Pastor Simon. I want to pray with you before we close. Uh, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for each and every listener. I thank you, Father God, that um, uh, you uh, have uh, taught and Father God, hopefully, Father God, the seed has fallen onto good ground. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that people will begin to rise up in the name of Jesus and uh, uh, possess their promise and to believe you for the miraculous, to believe you for the impossible in Jesus' name. Good God that you are. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads and guides us into all truth in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you don't know Jesus Christ, the one of whom I speak about, I love, I adore, he's the one that hung on the cross and died for my sins. He, he's died for your sins as well. L listen to me. I'm going to give you a chance to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Just simply say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. I turn away from wickedness. I turn away from evil. Lord God, I look to you. Jesus, come into my heart, cleanse me, save me, in Jesus' name.
amen and amen. Well, my clock says I am just about out of time. I've been with you for about an hour. I love to run my mouth, love to talk to about Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I love to praise him. I love to serve him. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Some of you have reached out and said, uh, uh, can you come and speak and so on and so forth. That season is coming. Keep praying for me. Uh, I'm praying for you. My wife and I, we're praying for you. We're so blessed and privileged uh, to be with you. God bless you next week. This, uh, I think it's the courage to believe. The courage to believe. Looking forward to it. That'll be part nine. Amen and amen. God bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious and merciful to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Shalom. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Give us a like. Give us a thumbs up. Share our uh, uh, this uh, message, Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, tell someone about us. We appreciate you praying for us. Uh, if you'd like to sow into our ministry, we'd love to uh, hear from you. Um, and uh, you can look at previous messages and um, you can find information in there. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye.